So you grew the company into a success by honing in on a particular sort of a subset of Correct. need within yeah. the industry. And, and it had to do with, with understanding your customer because here was the, the fundamental problem that we solved is that in, in 2008, you know, capital became very precious. It became extremely hard to borrow money and to buy these phone systems and big companies had to spend, you know, in some cases a million dollars. So we could, they could do this off balance sheet plus they had a very difficult time supporting uh, phone systems if they had like 10 offices or 12 offices. So, and, they, and a lot of these guys had different phone systems and different offices. So we basically said, look, we'll handle all your offices nationwide. We'll, you know, we'll uh, install, we'll support, and we build a model that allowed them to support that. And for that value, because they didn't have to worry about it, the, the bigger customers were able to pay much more of a premium than the small customers. And most of our competitors were going after the small customers. So that relationship and, and getting an extremely deep understanding on uh, just four or five customers when we got started. Uh, Dex Imaging was another one that, which was local and we worked with them and, and being able to understand the problems that they had allowed us to build a solution that we knew that would solve these you know, four or five bigger customers and then we could take out to a bigger uh, audience. Now, I imagine that this OODA concept is sort of an evolving process too. It's not like it's just in four stages, but as you get to the act yeah. stage, you're, you're observing at the same time and seeing new things. And in, in this company, as Televations was growing into a, a significant market share in its arena, how did you know at what point you would sell? Was that something you decided or was that something Bright House came to you? Yeah. How did that happen? What was that experience? So I, I've sold four businesses. Mm -hmm. um, and I've never looked to sell any of them. Um, so what, what's ended up happening was um, people just, I mean, I, I don't believe, I believe in building a business for the long run um, because that's the best way to sell it. And it, it's counterintuitive, but uh, you know, because you could build a business and, and change and fudge your balance sheet and not spend everything and make your business look real good. And then, and then that person doesn't buy you and then you're, your business goes in the tank, but I think um, if the best way to, to win and, and sell a business, and I'm always open to sell a business at a right uh, right time um, or for the right price, is uh, you know when they come and they and you have the walk away ability. You say I you know I could sell it or I couldn't. I'm not looking to sell it, but um, and Bright House came with three offers. They they made me an offer in um, in the summer like August of 2012 and. I literally didn't even respond. It was a lowball offer, and, and they called, aren't you gonna give us a counter? And I was like, no. <laughs> and, uh, and then they, they uh, came back with another one, it was closer, and then I ended up meeting with the CEO, and then they came up with a third one, and then we accepted that. Was part of the offer that you, as, as an individual, would come to work for Bright House? Or how did that happen? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, yeah. I, I figured, you know, at some point in my life, I'd like to work for somebody. <laughs> why? <laughs> well, as an new, entrepreneur, It's why? a new experience. So I've tell owned. us what you do for Bright House. I'm kind of now um, classified as the idea guy. So one, the CEO at, uh, took me aside and said, you know, one, one of the things that, you know, you kind of give us a fresh perspective. I'd like you to look at the resources we have and think of some new business ideas for us. So I looked at, uh, I read this article back in, um, so this is the observation. Yeah, this is the observation part. So I'm back to the observing. And I read an article, and some of you might have read this, it was an entire issue of Time Magazine back in February last year. It was called The Bitter Pill. And it tried to explain why your medical bills are so effed up. <laughs> and, but it, and it, you know, and you look at now, and our healthcare system is a really broke industry. And, and it tried to explain that. And, and what, uh, you know, whether you like Obamacare or not, I think the best thing Obamacare done is stuck a stick in the healthcare system and stirred it up. So it's now it's really broken, which is, I think, the best place to start. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that is, it's a gold mine for entrepreneurs right now because um, there, there, you know, there's going to be a lot of opportunities. And I think um, there is a fundamentally a great opportunity to change the delivery of health care instead of having to go into an emergency room or when you get sick. Let's deliver health care to the home and keep you well. I mean, it's, 
it's really stupid the way the only way you, you, you know you end up basically getting good health care is when you're in you know in, in bad shape <laughs> so and, and frankly the experience that I get when I'm in good shape and I go visit my doctor I mean how many people really feel like the doctor actually is involved and knows what they're doing and, and, and I have personal stories I actually almost died I was uh, I had a heart condition uh, this was a couple years ago um, and uh, and I, 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 I kept feeling something was bad and I went to my primary care physician and this is really why I got interested in healthcare and they said and they did all these tests and they said you're fine keep riding the bike and I'm a big bike rider I was riding like 100 miles and I so uh, I finally went and I was telling a friend this funny feeling I had in my shoulders and stuff like this and he said we well, ought to go get looked at Dr. Masley which I know Dave's a, a doctor uh, he's a pay only and he gives you you know I was turning 50 and I said I'll get one of those 50 year old physicals and soup to nuts and uh, I mean I did that on a Monday and literally on Friday they, they uncovered something in that and I was in open heart surgery um, and, and my Dr. Matt said you are a ticking time bomb and, uh, and now I'm 100% healthy so I mean that's you know I probably wouldn't be here if I you know stayed in our, our health system so I think there's a lot of room to fix it and uh, I think the cable networks are in the ideal position to deliver healthcare to the home. We have 2.5 million set-top boxes sitting here. I got 750 trucks driving around. There's no reason why you can't put a nurse and a medical device on one of those trucks and monitor people at home. And I'm doing this right now. I, I've got monitors on my arm, literally right now. When I walk into my house, it downloads it and puts it in the cloud. We've got a business model um, that I've uh, worked up the food chain at Bright House, and I'm, I'm now in the process of presenting to the New House brothers, who are the like the 40th richest people in the world um, who own Bright House. So that's what I'm doing.